Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing another technique building problem. Namely, solve this equation in the integers x and y. I suggest you try this one out for about 20-ish minutes. And now let's begin. So we had a problem like this before in the channel. Instead of a minus, there was a plus. And we tried the visibility, didn't work out. We tried, what was the other thing we tried? Some bounding. Here it seems even harder to just bound because to say like this side is much bigger than this side, um, says who? Says what? Like y can be much bigger than x and then this is highly negative or it can be close to what? Or it can be equal to what? So we can't just do that. But let's try to see, is there something we can do? Well, we try out, say, ah, it would be really cool if I could here get rid of the 2xy. And how do I do that? Well, I must complete the square. And to complete the square, I need to add y squared and subtract y squared. And so this is equal to, in fact, plus y squared minus 4y squared, because I added a y squared, I need to subtract 1, is equal to 1. And then this becomes x plus y squared minus 2y squared is equal to 1. That's just another way of writing it out. And what do we do with this? I invite you to pause for three minutes and answer that. Now the answer is, well, there's a lot of things we could do, but the quickest thing for us to do here is to just write this as a difference of squares. And now we have, this is x plus y plus 2y, so x plus 3y times x plus y minus 2y times x minus y is equal to 1. And now how do we solve this type of thing? Well, we have these two x and y are integers, so x plus 3y and x minus y are also integers. Their product is 1. What does that make these two numbers? Well, it either makes them 1 and 1 or a negative 1 and negative 1. Don't forget negatives when you're doing these cases in the integers. And what does that mean? So if both of these are 1, then we have this equation with two unknowns. And these two equations. Now what do we do? Say we subtract and we get that 4y is equal to 2, y is equal to a half. In other words, x is equal to, though actually that does not make sense because then I would get x is equal to 3 quarters. What happens if I subtract? Oh no, I get 4y is equal to 0, not 2. I added this side. So then y is equal to 0. This goes to show, so check your algebra. Double check it. I just messed up. I messed up. You double check it to see like if you've actually messed up. So this means y is equal to 0 x is equal to 1, and that ends up being a solution. 1 squared is 1. And the other one is, in this case, what we'll have is x plus 3y is equal to negative 1, and x minus y is equal to negative 1. Again, we subtract, get rid of the x, and we get that 4y again is equal to 0. y is 0, which now implies x is minus 1. Minus 1 squared is equal to 1. And this finishes up the problem. This is one way of like going about the problem. Another way of saying like, wait a second. The thing we did in the previous video, we said for every X, there's a corresponding Y for us. Like that means there's a solution. So we can say first pick a Y, then look at this as a quadratic X. We can also look at this as a quadratic in Y. Both things work. If you want to try that, do that. I'm going to look at this as a quadratic in, what's it called, X, because I've done it before. And now, the discriminant must be a perfect square. What is the discriminant? Well, we have this is so x squared plus x times 2y minus 3y squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So let me write it like that. It's easier for me. Now, 4 times, no, this squared minus 4 times this times this is equal to, so that's 4y squared. Because I'll have 4y squared, let me do like 4y squared, I'll get the 4 out immediately, minus this, so it's plus 3y squared plus 1. This needs to be a square. This is equal to 4 times 4y squared, uh, yeah, 4y squared plus 1. And now I need this inside to be a square. How do I do that? It seems very, very difficult, right? Like, how will I ever figure out whether or not, this, like, how, how will I find which, for which y this is a square? And the thing to note here is, wait a second, this is 2y squared plus 1. So if this number is a perfect, like, this is a perfect square, 4, 
So if this number was equal to perfect square, what type of square would it have to be? The answer is it will have to be bigger than 2y, right? It would need to be a square bigger than 2y squared. I guess we have a plus 1 here. So say this is then equal to 2y plus d squared. And then we'll have 2y squared plus 1 is equal to 2y squared plus 4yt plus d squared. You cancel these out and you get 1 is equal to 4yt plus d squared. Where, mind you, t here needs to be a positive integer. And what do we also know for y here? Well, we can also, like here we know t and y are both are of the same sign. Like that's sort of what we can assume when we're looking at it like this. Instead of saying this is minus 4 squared, we can say it's 4 squared. It doesn't change a thing to say like we're looking at the next square. And we're saying this square has, this one has to be bigger than this one. That's why we know everything here is non-negative. Actually, I should say that. Non-negative is that everything's here. So that means if y or t, if one of these, if both of them were not equal to zero, then this would be at least four, this would be at least one, and this could not be equal to one. And so from there we have that at least one of these has to be zero. If t is zero, then both of them are zero, so that doesn't work out. On the other hand, if y is equal to zero, then we have t squared is equal to one. In other words, t is equal to one. We're in the positive integers here. But that means we have y is equal to zero. And so we know that actually y needs to be equal to zero to have this be a square. That's what we've shown. And then you have y is equal to zero, and that gives you a corresponding x. Namely, this gives you the discriminant is equal to the quadratic equation itself. Comes so the minus b becomes equal to what's it called? Zero. And we have plus and minus the square root of 4 times 1, which is 2, plus and minus 2 over 2 is what x is, or plus and minus 1, and those are two solutions. Now this goes to show, again, two different ways of seeing the problem. Completing the square and then having a times b. We could have also had this as t times 4t, uh, 4y plus t, and then again is equal to 1. We have the two cases, but that was necessary here, and we also need to say like this square is bigger than this one, right? If this is 6 squared plus 1, isn't it? like that, if that's going to be a square, it needs to be at least 7 squared, right? Because we're adding, we're going to the next one. This finishes up our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving. Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be blah, 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 